I am not a conspiracy theorist. Never really been a believer in a whole lot of conspiracy. Like, they're fun to think about, look at, whatever. If you think that the White Star Line sunk the Titanic, but it wasn't actually the Titanic so they could get insurance money and then it just all went wrong and like 3,000 people died. Okay, that's fine. Like, you're entitled to believe whatever you want to believe. I like to think about them and look at them and it's fun to ponder, but I, I the genuine, genuinely think like I, I believe two conspiracies. Really, it's one conspiracy now, uh, and there are two that I have questions about in, in total. I believe that there's no gold in Fort Knox, right? Like the people who work at Fort Knox, are like yeah, there's nothing here. They haven't opened the vault in like 50 years. It's probably just there's, it's not there. Like why would the government tell you where the gold is? They're not gonna. The other, like, if, if you're the other one, uh, I, I didn't believe Stevie Wonder was blind. And then a couple weeks ago, he tried to hand Mariah Carey a microphone and looked kind of silly in the process. Um, so why would he look dumb like that? Unless he's trying to throw you off the scent that he's blind, not blind, and people are getting on to him. And then I don't know if Kurt Cobain killed himself. There's some sh shady stuff there. But on that, that's the conspiracy theories, I believe. Okay? Like, I, I believe we landed on the moon. There... The reason I bring it up is there is a Vanderbilt quarterback, Vanderbilt backup quarterback. Uh, his name is Mo Hassan. And he claimed on a podcast late last month that he was offered $300,000 to throw football games while at Vanderbilt. And I don't believe that for one second. Not one second. And he claims he was at uh, Jason Aldean's bar in Nashville. And uh, Italian mobster came up to him and offered him $300,000 to throw SEC football games. And that other quarterbacks um, in the league were in on the fix. And that they were making lots of money. He could make lots of money, too. All he had to do was, was throw the games. And that uh, every Alabama game was fixed, etc. That's his allegations. I do not believe that for a second, not one bit. And there are a couple of reasons why. One, this kid threw 17 passes in his college career. 17. And he got offered $300,000 to throw games. Somebody who's making no impact whatsoever. Does that sound fishy to you? Because it does to me. It doesn't sound like it doesn't. That doesn't pass the sniff test at all. Like if. If Bryce Young was to come out and say, I got offered $300,000 to throw football games. OK, I would believe that you're the Heisman Trophy winner. You're the highest profile quarterback in the nation. You ended up being the number one overall pick. Your games probably have a lot more betting action on them than the overwhelming majority of every other game in college football. Is there a lot of action on Vanderbilt games? I wouldn't probably either. There is because the spread is listed super low or the over-under is at a perfect spot. A lot more people are betting on Alabama and Alabama games than there are Vanderbilt games. So if there was a higher profile quarterback that had a lot more sway on the game that said, hey, I got offered to do this, I would buy it. Now he goes on to say, there are players in the NFL that I was told their exact names, but I'm not going to say their names because that's a bad look, or you're not going to say their names because it didn't happen. But $300,000 to a backup Vanderbilt quarterback? Come on now. And then second, the, the thing with conspiracies is, to believe them, you have to believe, for the most part, that everybody that's in on the fix is able to keep their mouth shut. And just think about, you know, the rumors that you hear about in your personal lives that end up becoming true. Even on the smallest scale, if you tell one other person something that you don't want people to know, the likelihood of everybody finding that out is really, really high. So for and this kid says that every SEC game is rigged. Every SEC game is predetermined. When was the last time 
that there was a result in the SEC that was truly shocking. Not even and, and not even from a betting perspective, just from a win loss score perspective. That you thought, holy cow, I cannot believe X Y Z happened. When even from a betting perspective, when was the last time that there was a whoa? Can you believe that the spread was 38 and a half and Vanderbilt only lost by six or whatever? Like, it, 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 it's not really there. It doesn't exist. There is no, and it's to the point where if something like that had happened, people would be talking about how fishy it is. Temple basketball is being looked at right now because of some irregular betting patterns and some irregular results. Like if a Temple UAB game gets flagged as a like, hey, something ain't right here. I'm supposed to believe that Georgia, Alabama in college football isn't going to trigger some alarm somewhere. And not even if it's Georgia, Alabama, if it's Auburn, Mississippi State. There's still a head. How, how many more people are betting on Auburn, Mississippi State? than Temple UAB college basketball in early March. Double, triple, quadruple? And if it doesn't raise any bells, I just, I don't buy the idea that like something that requires, first of all, if every SEC game is rigged for betting, which, you know, only Jedi or only Sith deal on absolutes, the idea that every game is rigged kind of requires that at least some players to be in on it, some coaches need to be in on it, which then in turn means some athletic directors are in on it, which probably means some presidents are in on it. So you're looking at a cabal here of a couple of hundred people, all of them needing to keep their mouths shut and never say any of this unless Mo Hassan is just so, such a trailblazer, a trendsetter, willing to say what nobody else is willing to say, or it didn't happen. These are really simple to figure out. Either this really elaborate plot to make the Italian mafia more money via college football gambling has been going on under our noses in that it's so lucrative that the backup quarterback from the bottom of the, the lowest of the low SEC schools can make $300,000 for his participation in it. And that every game in the Southeastern Conference, the sports preeminent division is being thrown and hundreds to potentially thousands of people are involved in pulling the wool over your eyes and separating you from your money. Or this kid's full of shit. Now, which one of those is easier to believe? Which one of those is more likely in your eyes? Like this is really, really simple. And I don't, I don't know what this young buck benefits from <laughs> benefits from saying this. But am I really supposed to believe that he, this kid's at Jason Aldean's bar and just hanging out and some mobster's like, hey, Mo, I'm Mo Hassan, backup quarterback from Vanderbilt. Eh? Like, that's good. That's kind of offensive. This Italian mobster walks up to the bed, like, first of all, recognizes because he's done his reconnaissance on who the backup quarterback at Vanderbilt is. And approaches him with a like, hey, would you like to make several hundred thousand dollars that you'll never be able to explain away to anyone in your life ever? No, I, I, I don't I don't buy that. So I don't buy that every game in the SEC is rigged. I don't buy that an Italian mobster. I don't think Giuseppe Stromboli came up to Mo Hassan at Jason Aldean's bar and offered him three hundred thousand dollars. And then also like. The idea <laughs> that this mobster goes up to this college kid at a bar and is like, would you like hundreds of thousands of dollars in exchange for your integrity? And the kid says, whoa, 
No, absolutely not. That's ridiculous. I could never. Uh, and then the guy's like, well, everybody else in the SEC is doing it. I'm going to give you specific names. Like the idea that this took place is preposterous. And I'm not willing to participate in the charades. So, no, I don't buy that every game in the SEC is rigged. And I, I, maybe I would probably have been short-sighted and like, no, there's no way an NBA referee is throwing games. There's no way that the end, like, I, I, maybe I would have poo-pooed the Tim Donahue thing. I think I was like 12, 13 when that came out. So I don't, didn't really have a great opinion on that at the time. But I, maybe I would have been like, no, nah, there's no way that's happening. But this one, it's a lot different from the mob approached one referee than the mob approached the backup quarterback of a three and nine football program. One of these things just doesn't sound like the other. So if you're going to, if you're a conspiracy theorist peddler, like this is right up your alley, man. Like the only reason Georgia has been successful recently is because they're paying, they're getting paid by the mob. What are we doing? Please don't let this permeate college football because I don't I don't want to deal with any time now that something funky happens in college football. I don't want to hear about how, you know, it's the mob that's paying off kids at Jason Alteen's Nashville bar. Uh, I don't want to deal with that in 2024. So let's cut that off right now. That'll do it for today's episode of The Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing. So if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Get sh make sure you're getting all that college football content that's coming out of Saturday Glory. And if you are listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. I'll see you tomorrow here on The Daily Huddle with Saturday Glory.